you so much for stopping by once again today. You know, guys, you've caught me at a great time as I move into my second discussion on promises of the Bible. The first presentation I made on this topic was a couple of weeks ago. And at that time, I discussed covenants and promises and their alignment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So today, what I want to do is kind of build a little bit on that. I'm going to start talking about some of the promises on a later date, but I just want to kind of touch a little bit more on this and in, uh, this information. So what I've gathered today and what I present to you is based on thorough research, yet they are not meant for you to overthink things, but simply offer us another perspective, another layer on studying the Bible as elements to go deeper than just the surface levels of our everyday thought and belief system. I have found that overthinking sometimes, and I have a tendency to do that, um, can sometimes skew interpretation. So what you've known or have been thought about the Bible, you must, I, b I believe you must hold on to. You must cherish those, those moments, those moments of truth, what you understand. And I really get that you should. Yet it has always been my belief that more material pertaining to the deeper study of the Bible can add to our lives exponentially. I know it does mine. I love to study the Bible. I love to meet with people and I love to talk about Jesus. It's just such a great, great thing to do. It gives me goosebumps to even think about that. So in one of my writings about a year ago, I believe, I touched on difference, the difference between a statement and a fact. And a statement of fact, I should say, and a promise. So this verse always gets me. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the earth. So this is in Matthew 28, 20, guys. So when we, when we read this, or when, when, you know, whoever reads this, you know, we could say, this is a beautiful promise from our Lord. But it is, is it really a promise, guys? Is it really? So the Bible tells us, right? that Jesus is always with us, which makes this not necessarily a promise, but it is a statement of fact. Jesus will never leave us or forsake us ever, not even in unbelief of him, reluctance of his teachings, disregard, disregard for him, prideful behavior, questioning of his truth, and and much more, many more, much more, right? We can try to hide from him too, but he's always here. He's here with me now. Nothing can ever change the fact that God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, all is love and embedded within this love. He keeps his clear and simplistic promises with us and for us. They are never ambiguous. However, if we frame them as such, then of course this will be our perceptions, right? As a man thinketh, right? That's in Proverbs 23, 7. So, leaving us in uncertainty is not God's style and will never be his approach. Promises and instructions are succinct and offer us clarity. Clarity, some may say. I'm not clear about what the Bible is saying, another may share. Hey, I really understand. I mean, sometimes it can be complicated. Therefore, I profess on the importance of sharing many interpretations to draw from you get to choose what's best for you. So with that said, this week I'm led to think of promises of security, a few fulfilled in me. These fulfillments did not occur just by reading the promises of comfort, as I call them. 
They were born within me based on personal conditions of tribulations that led me back to triumphs. Everything I have come accomplished in life has been from my prowess, my willingness to teach myself what I didn't know, from hard work, from school, from my parents, but most importantly, from my choices. My determination to choose my friends wisely also played a role in this. Role in this. And most importantly though, my complete trust in God. Well, you know, not always. In my younger days, um, I had some issues with that. But trust more now, trust in God more now than ever. So one promise of security I have often returned to this year is um, come unto me, all ye that labor and I and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Ye shall find rest unto your souls in Matthew eleven twenty eight thirty. 28, 30. God's promises are never conditional, guys. They are absolute. He is not interested in a quid pro quo situation with us. He has, he has no interest in that. Like I say, God, if you give me this, you know, then I'll do this. He, he doesn't want to hear that. Only the enemy requires this nonsense. God promises, God gives, because as a statement of fact, God is love and loves us without any conditions. He loves us unconditionally. However, this is not to say that the expectation of conditional statements of promises are not present in the Bible, specifically in the Old Testament. Here in Psalm 73, 1, we see truly God is good to Israel. So what was David saying here? Does this mean he'll be good to us too because Israel was worse than what we've done or are doing right now? Should we believe that these conditions mean God will be good to us too? I declare that the question we should all ask is, how clean are our hearts at this very moment? God wants to give and to give to us because he loves us, guys. Yet he is the ultimate parent who only asks that we follow and obey his teachings, his laws, his commandments. It is only in doing so we can experience the world he wants for everyone. What a world that works for everyone. Those of you who are parents know that we cannot consistently give to our child without having some boundaries, right? Boundaries in the household, boundaries with friends, you know, boundaries, period. So why must God not have boundaries too, right? His kindness requires we do better, friends. He deserves better. He really does. Our Father is so loving and so great to us. See, this is the thing though. Interpretation of the Bible in our present day lives is vital. Treasures abound in this wonderful book. The six words, truly God is good to Israel, should never be based on expectations because God is not conditional. He set his laws into place, 10 laws that we sometimes pick and choose from. We pick and choose which ones are applicable to follow based on the times and seasons of our lives. And through eloquent speech of his son, Jesus, he tells us to love one another, not just the people who look like us. These are what God wants from us, 
you know just love one or the other follow his and follow his guidelines that's it so in, in, you know in Greek in the Greek uh, perspective when the word promise was used it meant to announce oneself to offer service to another to take an initiative to serve this is closely aligned with rabbinical traditions through the use of the word assurance as well so we see how god's laws and what jesus said to love one another kind of just flows with you know with with those teachings uh, with Greek and with the rabbinical teachings. So behold, I send the promise of my Father on to you. We see this in Luke 24, 29. So this is another connection that I wanna kinda bring to close this presentation to you. So this week, uh, guys, I encourage you to spend time in the Epistle to the Hebrews, where we find numerous accounts of promises made in the Old Testament being realized through Christ. In addition, as we read through these, it's important to understand that the recognition of God's um, promises in our lives are vital. They are there, they are conferred, despite our choices, our behavioral patterns, or even our beliefs. They're there, you can't, you know, you can't, Take away what's in there. It's there for us. And, you know, through your choices, you can make the decision to believe them. I hope you do. However, this is not to say that God looks away from these very entities that lean away from his guidance. He sees everything, remember? So, you know, I would say choose wisely. Choose wisely to see these promises realized in your life. Friends, our efforts in this Christian walk must be unwavering to experience God's magnificence in our lives. Yes, we may stumble. I get that, I really do, I stumble. But instead of pointing one finger to the person who stumbles, let's use our whole hands to pick each other up. We must be meticulous in these efforts. Gosh, <laughs> there's so much more I want to talk about on this topic. And um, I plan um, to bring you more on this soon. Next week, I'll discuss another trade or occupation of the Bible with you. I just love looking into the work life of people in the Bible as I do today. Um, I find this so fascinating. So. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you are led to subscribe again please do so but no pressure all right you know that's not you know that's not my thing i'm not about that at all you do what makes you you know makes you feel good um no i leave you as i always do by saying be peace be kind be love and be a blessing to everyone you meet if you're having a hard day, let's try to squeeze these in anyway, okay? Just try. So guys, for now, I'll say take care of yourselves, friends. I'll see you next week. Have a fabulous, wonderful week spent with God. And I'll say bye for now. Take care. Bye-bye.